Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint a fall truck from the back side with apple barrels in the back of the truck. So I call this painting apple picking truck and I am demonstrating this on a 10 by 10 square canvas. You can do this on any size square canvas or if you wanted to stretch the design and do it on a rectangular canvas, you can do that as well. But I had a lot of these extra square canvases laying around so I decided to do a square tutorial this time around. And so colors, brushes are listed in the description and I'm gonna go ahead and get started right away. So the first step in this painting is to apply a base layer of paint on the canvas. So I'm actually going to paint this entire canvas with light blue permanent and titanium white. And I'm gonna use my three quarter inch flat wash brush. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double load the brush and I dipped the brush in the water first and kind of tapped it dry and that helps to thin the paint a little bit. But I'm gonna double load it and I'm gonna do expressive strokes, just flip flopping my brush all on the canvas and it's gonna cover with the blue and the white. Blue and the white are going to mix together to create kind of a light blue um, unblended look. So I'm purposely not allowing the two colors to blend all the way together to get a nice mixture of those two colors. And it just kind of creates a fun two-toned uh, abstract background for us. And this is actually going to be the sky in this painting. So Everything's gonna be covered in this blue. That sky is gonna be left blank. And so I'm just gonna cover the entire canvas. And if you wanna paint the sides, you can. One thing I am purposely doing is allowing to have more white than the blue on this. So you'll need a little bit more titanium white than the blue. You don't want the sky to be too dark. It should be a very light blue. If it's too dark, uh, you, we run the risk of that blue showing through all the rest of the things that we're going to be painting on the canvas. So that's going to be a little bit harder. Um, so keep it, the proportion of white to blue should be about three white to one blue, maybe one to two blue, but definitely a, a little bit more white than the blue to keep that base light blue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load my palette with a little bit more of that titanium white. And I'm gonna continue to paint the rest of the canvas. It doesn't have to be consistent throughout. So if you have blotches that look lighter than other blotches, that's kind of the point to have a, a variety of the blended look with the blue and the white, but not having it all blend together. That's kind of the point. So I'm gonna go quiet here for a little bit while I finish this step. You're gonna need to let this dry before going on to the next step. So the next step will be us drawing the truck design. So when it's dry, come back to it. You're going to need a pencil, eraser, and ruler. You can also download a traceable for this tutorial if you prefer to trace the design on the canvas. So what I'm gonna do first is apply my horizon line and my horizon line for this is 3.25 inches from the bottom that's if you're using a 10 by 10 canvas if you're using a larger canvas you might want to make your horizon line a little bit higher than three and a quarter inches but i'm just making little marks of three and a quarter inches across the canvas and then i'm going to place my ruler horizontal and i'm going to make my horizontal mark across the canvas so that is our horizon line. It's also going to be the line that we will use to represent the top part of the bed of the truck. So the top part of the bed of the truck lines up with that horizon line and that's gonna help us with the rest of the truck drawing. So we're gonna draw the truck next, step by step. So this top part where this horizon line is is gonna be the top part of the bed of the truck. So first, I'm going to draw a rectangle for the back part of the, the 
bed of the truck, the tailgate of the truck. So I'm just gonna do two lines going down vertical and the rectangle is gonna be about four inches across, does not have to be exact. And the lines going down about an inch and a half down and then kind of make that centered in, be, in the canvas, but it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. In fact, the painting looks a little better when it's kind of not perfect, it gives it some character. So you can kind of remember that when you're doing your drawing. Um, and then the sides of the fenders on each side of the tailgate do a curved line. And then we're gonna just kind of bring this line across. This line right here that I'm doing, it's slightly curved. This is the bumper and it kind of wraps around the fenders. And then our tires actually line up with the vertical part of the tailgate. So we have this vertical line right here. That's going to be where our tire, the left line of the tire goes. Same thing over here, the right line of that tire. So the tires are rectangular shape with the curved bottom. So just kind of sketch that. And you should have a little bit of space on the bottom of the road, probably like a finger width of space. And this can be, adjusted when we paint it in. And then the top part of our truck, the bed of the truck, we're going to um, make that. So the, the height of that is exactly the same height as where that horizon line is in the bottom of the bumper. So I'm just taking my fingers and kind of measuring that and making a mark. So it's the same height, the equal heights. And then, so I did two vertical lines and then I'm curving that to make the arch shape of the top of the cabin of the truck and then just kind of sketching that in paint will go over our pencil and then i'm just kind of going over my drawing i draw very light and sketchy at first and then i go back over and uh, make my lines just a tad bit darker but i'm also making it darker so that you can see it better you absolutely do not need to draw as dark you can draw it very lightly and then the last thing we're going to draw on this is the the window so the windows also also has an arch and then it goes down vertical and horizontal I'm just going to go in there and erase that arch that I made slightly too big. And again, this can all be adjusted and will be adjusted when we paint in. The drawing is just a guideline for the composition of our painting. And I'm not going to draw anything else. I'm not going to draw the trees or the pumpkins or anything like that. We just need the basic shape of our truck to get us going. And then we're going to be painting our truck in. So the truck was painted with two colors um, with a little bit of outlining of black, but the only two colors in this truck are turquoise blue and white. Feel free to change the colors of this. The reason why I chose turquoise is because it contrasts very nicely with the warm fall colors. But if you wanna do a red truck or a purple truck, feel free to change up those colors. So I'm loading my palette with turquoise blue and titanium white and using a 3 8 inch angle brush. That brush is in the pack of brushes that I've been using a lot lately, the Velvet Touch brushes that I'm linking in this video. If you don't have a 3 8 inch angle brush, you can use a bright brush, a flat brush, any small flat or small angle brush will work for this technique. So I'm going to do this. If you're my, if you did my other teal pumpkin truck that I created two or three years ago, it's the same technique. So we're going to double load the brush in the turquoise and the white. And we're just going to let those two colors blend. And I call these contouring strokes because they go in the direction of the shape. So starting with the top arch of the cabin of the truck, I'm just going to take that and do a curved stroke and let the blue and the white blend gently together. We don't want to over blend. That's going to create our two tone sort of rustic look when we don't allow the colors to blend together all the way. 
So I'm going around the window. I am not going to apply paint at all to the window. I'm going around it. The window is going to see through and we're going to see the sky through that window. So see how this stroke's going horizontal. Just grabbing different amounts of the white and the turquoise, not allowing it to blend all the way. These strokes are going vertical, curved, because the curve is going this direction, letting those two colors very lightly blend together. That stroke's gonna go horizontal. A lot of this area right here is gonna be covered by our apples and our, our barrels of apples. Um, but I'm going to make this part relatively dark to allow enough contrast. And it would be dark in that area anyway, kind of shadowy. So not so much white in that area above the tailgate. Right here, our fenders are gonna be a little bit more lighter color. See how I allowed that white. The angle brush really helps with this curve and defining those edges. Um, the flat brush would be doing the same thing too. I kind of like how this angle brush is working though for this technique. Um, so for the bed or the tailgate of the truck, I want this to kind of stand out. This is going to be outlined, but I made that part a little bit lighter and you can see how it's still how it stands out from the back of the truck. So just allowing different amounts of that turquoise and the white to blend differently is going to create some contrast to define the different areas of our truck. So it's not all solid the same color. It just kind of varies. And so this these strokes are going horizontal. Our fenders going curved, and we kind of lost the the tailgate and the fender line, that vertical line. But that's okay because we will be doing some outlining to help define the areas of our truck to make it look a little bit more defined. Um, but right now we're just concentrating on filling that in. Again, try not to over blend your colors so that they blend together. It should have some variations of the white and the turquoise. So there is our base layer of our truck. I will go back over with this with some dry brushing in a little bit, but this has to dry before we do some dry brushing technique. That means I'm gonna highlight it later. And so Mars Black and some more titanium white, we will be doing the bumper. The bumper is a gray sort of silver color and to make the gray, we'll be using black and white. So load your palette with some fresh, um, what was the first time we're using Mars Black? So load your palette with Mars Black. Grab some white if you need to load your white. I actually got a little bit of turquoise in my white and that's okay. Um, but we're gonna make a gray, so you need uh, just a teeny bit of black and some white, so maybe one part black, three parts white. Grab your number four round brush any similar size round brush because it's a small area and it's kind of a curvy area and that's why I grabbed the round brush and we're just going to paint the bumper using the same technique. So I blended these colors together but I didn't mix it all the way um, and I just want kind of a varied look again of that gray. So the gray is kind of blending gently with the white and not blending all the way to give it that two-toned look it makes it look shiny when that gray and the white don't blend all the way and so i'm going to paint my bumper and the bumper slightly wraps around the bottom of the fender again it's going to look kind of funky at first because we don't have the shapes outlined or defined and that's okay we're just filling in the first layer of color right now so you can have a little bit of titanium white on your palette separate from your gray and grab the little bit of white on your brush and let that white gently blend with the gray. It should be a very light gray. It shouldn't be very dark at all. Teeny bit of black right there on the bottom of my, on the tip of my brush. Um, this black goes very fast. So just be very careful with that black. And I'm just doing the bottom part and just kind of gently blending that in with the rest of the bumper. So the bottom of the bumper is a little bit darker. And again, just a few strokes over it, letting that blend, but not all the way. Don't over blend it. Gives it that kind of a shiny look with the streaks of the black in that light gray. So there's our bumper. And then I could 
go ahead and paint my tires in. So I didn't even rinse my brush. I just grabbed the black. The brush will just turn black because black is such a strong color, that Mars black color. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint my tires in. So wherever I drew those tires, just make sure that they line up with the sides of the cabin. For some reason, that one, when I, it kind of changed when I painted it in. So I just kind of realigned that a bit painting that in black. There should be a little bit of space right there below the tires, about a finger width of space. That's enough to apply some shadow lines uh, when we paint our path in. So next we're going to do this outlining that I keep talking about. And this is a spotter brush. Um, later on I'm going to switch to a different brush because the spotter brush is not as easy to use to outline, um, but you may find a spotter brush easy to use. This um, a really tiny detail round brush is all you need. If you have a steady hand, you can possibly use your number four round brush that you used for your bumper. But basically, I'm going to loosely outline a lot of parts of this truck to define it, just the Mars black, starting with the inside of the window. So all I'm doing is outlining the inner shape of that window with black. It's a, this should be a very thin line. It's not super thick or bold at all. It's very loose and it doesn't have to be perfect or consistent. In fact, if it's a little bit of a wobbly line, it gives your painting a little bit more character with this loose style of painting. So wobbly lines are okay. And then we're going to outline the top part of the bed of the truck. So that's a horizontal line that goes across and you can see how wobbly my line got there. And then the bumper. So outline the bottom part of that curve and the left part of that curve. And I'm not going to outline all of it right now. Do the bottom or the top part of that very loosely. I'm holding my brush very lightly. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on that. I'm just barely allowing the bristles to touch the canvas and that's gonna create that loose outlining effect. And then the bottom part between the tires. little bit of a mess up right there with the outline so I just grabbed some little bit of white right there and just kind of extend that right at the bottom kind of blends that black back into that and then I'm going to switch to this zero round so this is also a detail brush but the bristles are a little bit longer so I find this one a lot easier to use in that spotter I have a lot more control because the bristles are longer much better for this technique. So if you had troubles with that spotter brush, you could use that. There's a reason why the spotter brush is not called a liner brush because it's not as easy to use for outlining. So this is a, a zero round brush and I'm using that to outline kind of the rest of the truck, loosely outlined the top arc part of the truck and the vertical lines on the side of the cabin. And then redoing kind of the top part of the bumper. Um, the tailgate needs to be defined as well. So we have vertical lines that line up with the sides of the cabin. Little, They don't exactly line up. They're slightly inwards from the cabin. Um, the one on the right actually kind of lined up, but it again doesn't have to be perfect. So it should be a little bit slightly inwards from the top part of the cabin. So we have the, the tailgate of that truck outlined. And then, so we're gonna go ahead and draw our path in for our road. So we just need two simple diagonal lines starting from the bottom of the canvas and diagonal and it's going to disappear to the bumper. So same thing, try to make it even. So I try to make it the same kind of angle on both sides. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I suppose it's about an inch and a half on each side. So from the corner to where that line starts is about an inch and a half and then just diagonal. 
and then we can draw our license plate in. So just inside of the bumper, I'm going to define a rectangular shape. So it's just on the inside of that bumper, defining a rectangular shape. Make it large enough to put a design. Mine has, mine's going to have a heart on it, but you can definitely customize that. You can put a word on it or your initials or whatever you want. And then I'm going to just go ahead and paint that in white. So the bumper should be dry by now. If it's not, you may want to come back to this step to let it dry, but this should be white so that it is brighter than the rest of the bumper so that kind of stands out. So a solid layer of white, titanium white. And then the teal part of the truck should be dry by now. I'm going to go in and do some dry brushing to it, give it some highlight, make it look kind of um, vintage abstract look using that angle brush or if you're not using the angle brush you can use the flat brush or you can use the round brush for this so basically I'm only loading a tiny bit of white on the tip of the brush and I'm doing some highlights so in the upper left part of the cabin I just did a curved stroke for that uh, arch and then the left and right part of the body of the fender of the truck same thing kind of a curved stroke again only a tiny amount of white on your brush if you need to wipe some of it off you can it should be a very very small amount on the bed of the truck I'm going to do vertical and horizontal so two horizontals on the top and bottom or one horizontal on the top one on the bottom vertical on the left and the right a very very small amount so when I load the brush you can see me wiping it off on the plate and that allows only a small amount of white it's dry brush because we can see that teal showing through it's not opaque it's kind of dry scratchy feathery and then um, another way to do this technique is just to have a towel handy and wipe off your brush after you load it and that will allow your dry brush uh, to create that dry brush effect and just a small amount and then I went back in here with a little bit more teal and kind of went back over some of that square sort of direction or rectangular direction I'm making with the strokes just to kind of dim down that white a little bit so if you if you applied way too much white highlight you can always go back in with a little bit of teal kind of go back over that and dim that down a little bit doing a few more curved strokes at the top here and you can see what how that dry brush effect with the white really gives our truck that vintage sort of shiny look so it's not just that same color of teal we got some expressive dry brush strokes on our truck gives it a lot of character doing it this way and then I'm going to do the window. So the window is, you can actually get away with just not doing anything to the window because it's see-through. It should be the color of the sky. But I actually went in with some white, dry brush white. So I loaded white, wiped it off, and dry brushed the window. It really only shows up a little bit. So I actually just grabbed some more white on my brush to have it show up a little bit better. Um, just kind of gently add some white in there to the window again very subtle look there and then just did a few more strokes of that white in there you can add some to the bumper as well so I did some curvy strokes on the bumper but kind of left it alone after that um, next I'm going to do texture on the tires so I'll grab the zero round brush again with titanium white little bit of white on the tip of that brush I'm going to do diagonal strokes going one way and diagonal strokes going the other way to create that texture and then I grabbed a little bit of black. I'm actually going to do some shadows on the bottom of the bumper. So I'm just taking that black, just doing a few horizontal strokes with that black and just kind of gently blending that back up. That gray paint is dry, so it's not blending with the gray. It's just kind of fading out. So it gives my bumper a little bit of a darker area at the bottom. The next thing that we're going to do is paint the path that our truck is on. And so I'm gonna load my palette with some new colors, some fun fall colors here. So I have red oxide, cadmium yellow medium, 
and some titanium white if you need to freshen up titanium white on your palette. So a red brown color, a yellow, and a white. And then I'll be using the little angle brush again for this. So basically, I'm just going to mix a little bit of white into my red oxide. It's going to make it lighter. And then I'm going to do horizontal strokes to paint in this path. So the uh, object is to kind of go around our truck. So painting the negative space around the truck. Um, do your best to kind of go around the tires and the bumper. If you need to change the direction of your stroke to outline the outer part of it, you can. And then just for the most part, it's got to go horizontally. And um, doing a little bit of color variation in there by grabbing some more of the red oxide as I reload my brush. So I'm just cutting in on that truck shape. If you accidentally paint over some of the tire or some of the bumper, we can always go back and touch that up later. So I'm just continuing to do some horizontal strokes in there, filling in that path. We'll do some texture and shadow work later, but right now we're just adding that first layer of color in on that path. And then where that diagonal line is, I did a diagonal stroke. So more horizontal. And then I can grab a little bit of yellow. Right now that yellow is not really gonna blend or show up. It'll make that color look a little bit warm. So I'm just grabbing it just to kind of vary that color. But that red oxide is such a strong color that that yellow is not really gonna take over. It made it look kind of warm on the far left. But we can go in and blend other colors into this later. So there's the first layer of our path filled in. And so then we're going to do the left and right sides of the land. So I'm just taking that color that's left on my brush and doing kind of curved, more expressive strokes on the left and the right of the road. So um, the, the land that's kind of further in the distance is lighter. So I'm adding a little bit more white up here closest to the horizon line and doing curvy sort of strokes and then kind of adding a little bit more red oxide as I get to the bottom. So the land is lighter, kind of gets a little bit darker towards the bottom and it's curvy strokes instead of left and right strokes like what we did in the road. Grabbing a little bit more yellow right there on the bottom, doing more curvy strokes. So the we can go in and add some more things on our land, but I'm just gonna wipe this off and do the same thing over here. So, adding a little bit more of that red oxide right there at the bottom to make that bottom part a little bit darker. Um, but over here on the left, I'm gonna start in the back with the lighter colors. So this is the red oxide mixed with that titanium white. Again, just curvy strokes, kind of rounded, almost like there's a hill or an elevated land next to our road. The road is flat, this is more, um, it's got more of a height to it, more rugged, not as smooth of a land. There's some shrubbery on the ground and it goes light to dark and that just kind of blends on the canvas and down to the bottom. That rod oxide is our darker color that's gonna be more on the bottom. So I'm just continuing to do those curvy strokes Grab a little bit of yellow in there and kind of blend that up. And then the bottom part has more of the pure red oxide. I could outline that with my brush and just do some curvy strokes. So you can see how the strokes look different on the road. It's smooth and flat 
the land on the left and right has more of the texture to it so we can tell the difference but we will go in and add some more detail into our road and land later we just have to let that layer dry so i'm going to go ahead and rinse and dry i'm going to touch up the tire on the truck and a little bit of the bumper that might have been painted over with that path so i'm just going to grab the black this is that four round brush and i'm just going in there and re-outlining that tire to make sure that it stands out against our path then i'm just going to take that black and continue down under the tire doing some very very loose horizontal strokes not pressing hard on my brush at all. Um, this is creating that shadow on the road. I'm doing a little bit of it on the rest of the road as well, but the shadow is very prominent under that tire. Then I'm just gonna grab some of the red oxide mixed with a little white. So some lighter colors in there on the road. I'm just adding some texture, doing horizontal strokes with that very very loosely um when i say loosely we're holding the brush very lightly we're not pressing hard because if i press hard then the color is going to be too bold and too strong but pressing it lightly we'll get that light color on there and i'm just going to go in and kind of re-outline my bumper too that might have been painted over um, from the land on the left and the right and from when, when we did the path So I'm just loosely outlining that bumper, the bottom line of the bumper. Make sure that everything is in front of our land and none of that land was painted over. Adding just a little bit more shadow lines under the tire, a few lines on the path. And then I'm going to loosely outline the diagonal lines on that path very gently uh, paint that darker line. It helps our road path really stand out a little bit more. So next we're going to do our fabulous trees. And so the rest of the height in this painting is taken up by those large fall trees. And I am going to go ahead and mix a dark gray on my palette by mixing the black with a little bit of white. My gray accidentally grabbed some of that turquoise, but that's okay. And a little bit of water on there to make our paint looser when the paint is slightly watered down it's going to make it easier to do the trees because our paint is going to flow very nicely when we add that little bit of water in there and i'm going to twist my brush as i load it when you twist the brush it helps that paint get to the tip of the brush and it also makes your brush a nice point gives the brush a nice point start at the bottom these are very thin trees and branches so i'm not making a thick line at all just using the tip of the brush to do a very loose letter y and our y is going to branch out into some other smaller branches using just that tip of the brush very very light hand not heavy handed at all i do a similar tree next to it very wavy, thin, tall tree. Um, the base of these trees all start out the same, but they're just different heights. So I'm not making the base closer to the bottom of the canvas. They're all kind of starting in the same spot, but they are different heights. So I did two shorter ones in between the two taller ones. And I'm just gonna kind of mimic what I did on the left and do the same thing over on the right. Starting that um, tree on the same level as the other one. So I'll start with the big one. The big one goes almost all the way to the top. And look how I'm just loading some more water on my brush. The water really helps with the flow of the paint. Doing long, stretched, wavy lines for our branches. So this one's our shorter tree. And then we have some shorter, smaller trees. I guess the shorter ones are gonna be our apple trees later on some shorter trees not the taller ones those ones don't go up very high and you can do more if you want i didn't do any between the truck um just left that area kind of blank so there's no trees showing through the window and i guess there wouldn't be if there's a road right there so then 
We're gonna let our branches dry before we add our leaves, but I wanna go in and add the baskets that are in the bed, or the, in the back of the truck. So the baskets are gonna first be a layer of white, and I'm gonna use the round brush. So I'll get that round brush rinsed off and dried, and I'm just going to use that titanium white to paint a, a trapezoid shape, two trapezoid shapes for our baskets. So just very simple diagonal line, diagonal line, horizontal line, and then we're filling it in solid with white. If we did not fill it in solid, if we just went straight to brown, it wouldn't give a lot of good coverage right away. So the white helps to cover that turquoise blue that's there. So there's our first basket, very simple trapezoid shape. This is a very loose painting. It does not have to be realistic looking. And then we do the same thing, another trapezoid shape and fill that in solid white as well. Next, I'm going to load burnt umber on my palette. So before this white dries, this is what I'm going to do with the burnt umber. I'm gonna grab the burnt umber on the tip of my brush, and I'm gonna do the strokes going in a vertical direction, except when they kind of go slanted, they go in a little bit of a diagonal direction. So I'm just painting that brown in and letting it blend with the white. So if the white catches it and it turns light brown, that's okay. It's going to allow our basket to have a little bit of fun texture to it. So I'm just doing those lines, vertical, diagonal, and filling it in and then outlining the top part of our basket as well and the bottom part. And if you accidentally paint over part of the bed of the truck, that's okay because when the brown dries, we can go back and touch up the turquoise of the truck. Our trees should be relatively dry by now and we're gonna transition to do uh, the leaves. And the leaves were done with the cad yellow and the red oxide that's already on the palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a really dark yellow. I'm going to mix some yellow with that red oxide and I'm using the angle brush to do our darker leaves first. So it should be an orangish yellow color and just grabbing that yellow slash red oxide color, I'm going to flip flop my brush and just allow it to create some square strokes over the top middle area of our trees. The bottom part of the trees are gonna have a little bit more of that red oxide so we can add a few of those red oxide colors in there but I'm just using my brush to create short angular strokes. And then I'm going to rinse and dry and I'm going to create a bright yellow on my palette. So I'm going to put some new yellow on there and I wanna mix yellow and white together. That white is going to allow the yellow to be very bright. The leaves at the very top of this painting are lighter and brighter. So I'm gonna grab a chunk of the white, grab a chunk of the yellow, mix it all together, but you don't have to mix it all the way, especially if you want some nice variety of color in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So just short angular strokes, so relatively thick strokes too. And just doing that bright yellow, it's really gonna brighten up that top part of our tree line. And if we wanted to do some variety in there, I can grab a little bit of that orangish color that I mixed on my palette, or I can add some yellow down into some of our other darker colors and let that yellow kind of blend with some of those leaves. Grab some more white, maybe there's some very, very brighter leaves. So a nice variety of fall color up here. That white really helps to make some of those leaves look like they're glistening and glowing. And I'm doing a kind of an arch, but I'm leaving a lot of sky open, especially above the truck. And then when this dries, I can go in and add some more branches up at the top. I'm gonna go in and add just a few more of this yellow in there. 
don't want to cover up all of those darker leaves. We just want a majority of the bright yellow, but there's still some darker leaves showing through. And next I'm going to add some greenery. So we have some apple trees in our painting and that is going to introduce our new color to there. So light green permanent is what I'm loading and I'm adding some fresh cad yellow medium hue. So light green and yellow. And I'm going to mix the yellow and the green together on my palette. A little bit of white to lighten that up. So it's gonna be a warm light green color and not mixing it all the way on the palette gives some color variation. So our greenery starts a little bit below that horizon line, but definitely goes up into some of those shorter trees. And then I can even grab just that light green and not that yellowish green color to add some variety and color in there. And these strokes are a little bit different. I'm using more of the tip of the brush to create smaller marks. Um, some are kind of bigger marks, but nice variety of kind of big and smaller, more narrow, narrower marks um, but just a greenery area right there maybe some of the green goes down on the ground maybe there's some green shrubbery down there not everything in fall has to be brown and red we do have some green in there so I'm just letting that green kind of go down into the land and then I, if I wanted to so what I'm doing here is I grabbed a little bit of the red oxide on my brush and I just went back over some of that green and blended it back into the landscape so not too much green or just another layer and I'm rinsing that off and I'm going to dry and then add some more green up in the tree area. Um, the green doesn't go any higher than about the middle part so there's no green up in the top part of the tree line just the green on the shorter trees that we painted. So some shorter strokes in there with the green but again, leaving some of those branches showing through. And then when this dries, we can always go back in and add some more branches if we needed to. I'm going to rinse and set this brush aside and grab my zero again. And I wanna go in and kind of touch up our bed of the truck where those baskets are. So that brown from the basket is dry. I'm just gonna take that line and re-outlined that top part, made it a thicker line, but it also makes it look like those baskets are in the truck and not kind of hanging out. And so we're gonna do the apples next, and the apples were done with Naphtho Crimson. You can do it with any red, I just happened to grab this red, and then a little bit of titanium white if you need to freshen up your titanium white. Um, I'm gonna use my four round brush for this, and basically I'm going to paint little, red circles in the basket. So these ones you would only see part of them because they're inside the basket, but then these ones that are piling up, we can paint full circles. And you can even grab some titanium white and mix that with the red to make it into a lighter color. So we have apples that are slightly different colors. If you wanted to utilize your green and do green apples or yellow apples, you can do that, but I decided to do all red apples. So I'm letting that white kind of blend with some of the other colors to create some variety in the apple colors. So maybe the light's hitting them different ways. It also helps them to stand out so it's not just a big blob. We actually have circle apple shapes that we can see. So some are lighter and they're standing out from the others. So just pile your apples up on the barrels. And then on the trees, on our apple trees, we can do little red dots to indicate that there are apples on that tree. I love the little pop of contrast this red gives with those the green in there. So I'm just doing really thick kind of dots just on the green part. Some, lot, some of the dots are smaller, some are slightly bigger. Okay. 
Next, since my branches are, or not my branches, but my leaves are dry for the most part, I'm gonna go back in with my round brush and add some branches that are overlapping my leaves. So uh, with the black, I actually accidentally grabbed some of the brown, but that's okay. So with the black, I'm just loosely painting some more branches, especially up at the top where there weren't any branches there. So I'm just adding branches in there very loosely so that we have some branches at the top. I can go in and maybe add some more branches towards the middle. If you wanted to, you can add some more branches on the bottom and the apple tree area. So wherever you think more branches should kind of show up, but don't go too crazy with it. Then I can grab that brown. And with that brown, I'm just doing some grass lines at the very bottom. So watering that brown just a little bit. I'm just doing um, loose, diagonal lines in there to paint the grass. Just on the bottom area, I'm not gonna do it all throughout the land. Gives that bottom area a little bit more attention. Some more texture at the bottom, some more detail at the bottom since there's lots of details in the back. And then later on, we will be doing some pumpkins down here as well. Touching up my shadow a little bit down there and my diagonal lines. Next, I'm going to paint the little stems on our little tiny apples. Very, very subtle detail, but just with the brown, doing little tiny brown lines. Not on all of them. You maybe wouldn't see the stems on all of them, depending on which direction the apple was facing. And then I'm going to do the fall lettering on the back of the tailgate. You can customize this with a, a word or your last name. So that's up to you. But I'm just going to do fall. So do with the black in the four round brush, a little bit of water in there, twist your brush to get that right on the tip of the brush. And I'm just going to do F A L L in cursive. If you're not really comfortable just doing the letters without drawing it out first, you can get a piece of chalk and draw that out first to make sure your letters fit correctly and then you can go back over the chalk or the pencil. Uh, sometimes it helps with a like a white color pencil to draw it out first. And I'm just going back over some of my letters to make them a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to paint a cute little red heart on the license plate. Again, if you wanna customize this with something else, feel free to do that but I like how adorable that little heart looks. Just a simple red heart and that's it on the license plate. Um, for the apples, I went in and did a little green mark for some leaves. So I just grabbed a little bit of the light green permanent color on my brush, just a few little marks of green for the leaves. Again, you don't have to do that for all of them. You can mix a little bit of white in the green as well to give it some color variation. The next thing I'm going to do are the pumpkins. This is the final detail in this painting, the cute little pumpkins on the bottom left and right. So to do the pumpkins, we actually need to white out the shape of our pumpkin first because if I just made orange and painted that it's not going to show up. So I'm taking my white with the four round brush and making the shape of the pumpkin and then without rinsing the brush I'm making orange on the palette. So yellow and red make orange so the napthal crimson mixed with cad yellow. You need more yellow than red so about three parts yellow one part red and of course there's still a little bit of white on my brush. So I'm going to take that and stroke down to create the bumps of the pumpkin starting at the top and stroking down. That white isn't dry so it's picking up some of that white. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure as I'm stroking down and it's going to create some uh, texture color variation in there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the reddish color to create an orange, kind of a darker orange. And I'm going to go back in there and add some darker colors in there. So stroking from the top down, so stroke 
make one line, stroke down, I'm just kind of letting that blend and not over blend. So those different colors of the orange are gonna make that pumpkin look like it's got some different shades of orange in there. So there's my little pumpkin on the lower right. I'm going to do another pumpkin on the left. He's gonna be a little bit bigger and we only see kind of the top part of it. So I'm just gonna grab the white and create that in the lower left area. So even though I didn't rinse my brush, I grabbed that white and I know it's cut off just a little bit there so you can see, but that bunch of white is enough to white out the area so for the coverage. And then I'm just gonna go in and add my orange strokes in there before this dries. And so do the orange, start from the top, stroke down, make a variety of some darker reds and some oranges in there, a little bit of that white mixing in, just creates our simple color variation in our pumpkin texture. And so for this stem, I just did the black. If you wanted to do burnt umber instead of black, you can just do that instead. So I just grabbed that black on my brush, I'll grab a little bit of burnt umber in there. Um, burnt umber is such a dark color. So black or burnt um, umber can both work for this. But just kind of um, start your stem below the very top part of that pumpkin. And then just kind of do a, a, it starts out a little bit thick at the bottom and then it curves and kind of twists. So if you want to make it twist more, you can. I did paint the sides of this painting. I extended the bottom and left and right sides with the red oxide in the top and the top left and right side with the light blue permanent in the white. So you can do the same if you want. But that is it, my friends. This is the conclusion of the apple paint apple picking truck. I almost said apple painting truck. <laughs> I guess it is an apple painting truck. Uh, but that that's it. I had a lot of fun with this classic fall truck design that everybody loves to do. And thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.